Welcome friends to another r slash malicious compliance video. Today we've got some amazing stories of malicious compliance and our first story is from Taj Mao. Want proof we are working? Proof you will get. I worked in a bank's back office for over a decade. Towards the end of my stay there, we got detached from one department and moved to another during a general restructure. While there, we get talked down on and called stuck up and unfriendly. Mind you, because of compliance, we sit in a secure environment that allows little interaction to non-staff of the unit. As a result of some beef the head has with us, stemming from not understanding our duties, we got a new head unit who came in with the same attitude, saying we were blowing our jobs out of proportion and that the general opinion is we're lazy. She wanted to be copied in every mail we sent out, as well as receive all our standard operating procedures, etc. The thing is, in our unit we had like 5 subunits and she had no idea no one had asked us for a structure or our job descriptions. They all came with preconceived notions about us. I was tasked with sending the procedures, work manuals, job descriptions, and team strength. We shared all our unit email passwords, and that's when it starts to dawn on her when she saw one mailbox having over 500 emails and only 3 people attending. Then we started copying her in our mails, in a day we get no less than 200 mails and send more than that, and that's one subunit only. She got copied in everything, every single mail from 5 subunits. In 3 days, she came running, asking us to include her in escalations and relevant mails only. My colleagues, ever mischievous, turned a deaf ear. We continued to copy her for about 3 weeks and even included her in automated responses. She missed her own relevant mails because her box would be filled with over a thousand mail. After a month, she sent someone to plead that we stop, which we did somewhat. She opted to be removed from the unit head position after that and gave the department head a report. Safe to say we got some respect after that. It was just so sad that they treated us as such without any attempt to understand what we did. In the end, occasionally, she would get still copied in like 20 mails a day till I, later a team lead, Ask them to stop. If some new big boss came in bearing down on you ready to shake things up, would it make you more than happy to put them in their place and make them realize why things are the way they are like OP did? Or would it all just frustrate you? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Our next story is from Ancient Educator 76 a slow burn malicious compliance for the ages. French fry theory. I run the drive through at the fast food king in the southwest, taking orders, making drinks, washing dishes and cooking nuggets, fries, etc. I've, we've, noticed a trend in ordering fries. Probably inspired by the internet. Thanks, Al Gore. The trend is a fast food hack, where a person orders their fries no salt to guarantee the fries have to be made fresh. Because we salt our fries, it's what we do. Sure, there's those that order no salt because they need no salt or prefer it, but those are few and far between. Let's just say the only thing liberal about the Valley of the Sun is its application of condiments and, especially, salt. We've had so many people ordering no salt that we now have a separate section where we make unsalted fries. We hold our fries for 30 minutes, then toss them either way. If you're on the tail end of that, you still get darn good fries. Having us make you fresh fries individually backs up our line by 2 minutes minimum. So now people think they're being slick by ordering no salt fries just to get fresh fries that were made recently enough to be good. This is also beneficial for those who genuinely need no salt because they don't have to wait now. It's ready. To give a specific example, one of our frequent flyers say, yeah no salt on them fries after his order. As he gets to the window and says, those fries are fresh, no salt right? They say, oh, you wanted them fresh? Like a new batch? We make them fresh regularly and make no salt too. We'll have to make you a new batch. It'll be four minutes and you'll have to pull around so we can bring them out to you when they're finished. Yeah, forget that. Just give me what you got. You got it. I definitely get both sides of this because as a customer, the one time you're going to fast food, you don't want to be stuck with the 30 minute old fries. But as the worker, you don't want to have to be making a new batch every single time because it's not really fast food at that point. Would you ever do this trick just to make sure you got fresh fries? Let me know in the comments. Our next story is from KA1913. I don't want to see any more notes from your teacher. When my son, we'll call him Dave, was in first grade, about six years old, he was having trouble adjusting to a full day school schedule. Kindergarten had been half day. 
Well, by Friday of each week, he just couldn't keep calm and would talk to his classmates when he was supposed to be listening and definitely not distracting them. So his teacher would send home a note stating Dave was causing distraction and misbehaving. So I sat young David down and explained how he had to be quiet while the teacher was talking, that we could have friends over if he had made new ones. I ended the conversation with the title, Now David, I don't want to see any more notes from your teacher about you misbehaving. Next time you will lose video game privileges for a day. He was malicious compliance. The next Friday, we went on a family camping trip and Dave made it through the week without getting a note sent home. Or so I thought. Come Monday afternoon, I received a phone call from Dave's teacher. Hello, Dave's dad. Dave misbehaved in class on Friday, and today, to make things worse, he brought in the note with a obvious forged signature. Obvious because he hadn't learned cursive, so it was sloppy block letters with lines drawn connecting them. I said, Dave, I thought we talked about this. You weren't supposed to misbehave anymore. And now you didn't bring home the note and you forged my signature, so you're in bigger trouble. He responded, but dad, you said you didn't want to see any more notes. Kids take things so literally. Dave is now a very kind, outgoing, funny, friendly 20-year-old who makes his dad proud daily. I'm not gonna lie, I've been in Dave's situation before. I think I was in the fourth grade and I got in trouble for something. And it doesn't really work when the teacher gives you the note to take home to your parents. Well, what if I just don't show them? The teacher ended up getting mad with me and I got sent to the principal and the principal was actually really cool and talked with me and they could tell I was regretful for what I did in the first place and they let me off with a warning. Easily the best principal I've ever had. Our next story is from 51225, don't want to turn my socks right side out? No problem. When I was a kid, maybe 8, I would take my socks off and toss them in the laundry inside out. There were 4 males in the house, including my dad and 2 brothers. So 7 days times 4 males with 2 feet, that's 56 socks if my math is correct. My mom complained about my socks for some time, stating that I had just my socks, but she had to deal with everyone's. Makes sense. If I didn't start turning them out, she was just going to wash them that way. Well, one day, she did just that and gave me back my clean inside-out socks. I took one, poked the toes in, and pulled it over my foot backwards, thus turning it right side out on foot. My mom was pissed. It's been over 50 years. I still don't always turn them out, but now I do my own laundry. To be fair, when I was a kid, I definitely did the same thing. I would just pull them off my foot and it would kind of roll and it'd be like a balled up inside out sock you never realize how lazy you are when you realize you're annoyed at taking the five seconds to unroll your sock before you put it in the dirty clothes laundry just so somebody else can go and clean it for you this next story is from childhood trauma 87 eyes open a toddler's malicious compliance this is from the 80s and is about my innocent malicious compliance at the age of two my brother was born a month before my second birthday I, being a small little girl, instantly fell in love with him and wanted to play with him all the time. My mother was in college working on finishing her degree and my father worked part-time and nights and was the primary caregiver. So a two-year-old constantly trying to play with a baby who was trying to nap made life not fun. So my father and mother, after a few months, told me I was only allowed to play with him when he was awake. Specifically, I could not play with him until his eyes were open. And what does a two-year-old do when she's told her favorite toys off limits until his eyes are open? Well, dear reader, she finds her other toys and starts dropping them on her sleeping brother until he wakes up crying and runs happily to tell her parents that, eyes open, eyes open. My parents had to start keeping me with them while I did other things while he slept and learned I was wily and tenacious because if they lost sight of me for even a minute, Before long, there would be a crying baby and a happy little two-year-old proudly proclaiming, eyes open. It's always a risky business trying to barter with a two-year-old. They needed to have a clause in there where they can't wake them up, but honestly, a two-year-old's probably going to find some kind of loophole in that regardless. And another story from Agent Educator 76, you dummies need to read that order back to me. Yes, this hillbillified lady twanged this filth verbatim in my drive-thru. I decide instantly to repeat what she said, what I typed, and what was shown in the bright lights of her screen right in front of her. Verbatim, accent included. Yeah, yes, I'd like to get a Baconator double and a regular Dr. Pepper. 
I switch to my Boston voice and say, I presume that by regular you mean medium. Then switch right back to Twingville, USA, with large fries. Now how about you dummies read that order back to me? Yuck, yuck, yuck. The laughs ratted in for flair. Is that correct? She retorts, well, you didn't have to be a jerk about it. Yes, I did, ma'am. Yes, I did. I mean, to be fair, it, it is their accent. OP going out of their way to, like, accentuate their accent and bring light to it. It is being a little bit of a jerk, but it is malicious compliance. This next story is from Bubblegum Berry. I need to abide strictly to lunch and break rules? Sure thing. I work in a very strict healthcare company. Rules have to be so strict regarding privacy, practice, etc. My job wasn't patient-based, more lab work and analysis. This was unpaid, by the way, but I still had to sign a contract. I left work early and took extra time during lunch, as I had very little work to do some days, as there were delays in training, and a lot of shadowing, and they even took months to find me a computer to sit at. One day they called me in as a warning for time management issues. They said very adamantly that lunch was 30 minutes and you can have a 15 minute break before and after. I said I took hour long lunches instead of my two 15 minute breaks to be more available to people, but that didn't fly. Line up the malicious compliance. I made sure that I'd take my 15 minute breaks 25 minutes before my lunch, meaning I'd be wandering up the stairs and by the time I got to my desk, logged back in and checked work, it was time for lunch and I'd be evacuated from the building. I'd also take my 15 minute breaks at peak shadow time if nothing was scheduled, so where normally someone would come up to me and ask if I'd be okay training on the fly, I wouldn't be there, and as it wasn't scheduled, I was doing no wrong as long as I stuck to my 15 minutes. I also made sure to screenshot times I'd log in and times I'd log out to show I was complying to their rules. I got called up and told that multiple people tried to find me over many occasions and that I was skeeving off work and I've gotten worse since I got a last warning over my long lunches. I showed her my screenshots and she couldn't say anything but she was clearly not impressed. Cue malicious compliance because I didn't really like her. I found out one of my office buddies would enter and leave the building more than the three times you're supposed to so I asked not to report him just curious. He said he smokes. So I say surely with the three breaks you have, you're not allowed to go just smoke, you should do it within your time. He told me that as long as it's not more than 10 minutes and it's not on the grounds, no smoking policy, then it's fine. Oh boy, he just gave me gold. I'm no smoker, but as I know my manager would find any way to clap back, I bought cigarettes. And the next day had pretty much the whole day off through 10 minute on and off smoke breaks. I'd mostly hold it in my hands, but took pictures for everyone and logged it as a smoke break on my self-made timesheet. The day after, I got called in saying I'm at this point disrespectful. I showed her all my evidence and said if smokers are allowed out whenever, I guess I've taken up smoking. She had to get her manager involved and he asked where this has stemmed from as I've been a nuisance recently. I told him that my time management didn't fall in line with the contract, and now it does. I told him honestly that I work hard and actually take less time during lunch than I would if I took my two breaks, and also that if I was done with work and there was no more and I'm not getting paid for it, then I should be allowed to leave 15 minutes or so earlier to catch buses, etc. He said there's not much he can do, so I said there's not much I can do. I made sure I wasn't wasting coworkers' time anymore and got on with my job, but during stretches of no work or just periods where I wanted the time out, I walked out, cigarette in hand, ready to waste my day. I won't be working there again. It definitely seems like kind of a grandfathered in thing for people who smoke to have those smoke breaks. It almost seems weird, it seems like supportive of an addiction in a way. I mean, I'm sure it's nice to have those breaks, but it seems a little unfair to non-smokers to not have any breaks. And because these people do smoke, they get to go out 10 minutes every so often. And our final story of the day is by Assistance OK7588. Get out? Sure. Me and my family were eating lunch, chicken wings and salad. Wings were cold, so we put them all on my plate to heat them up in the microwave. In the meanwhile, my grandma and father started arguing about something meaningless. So I said, please stop arguing. We're eating. At the same moment I was taking the wings out of the microwave, my father replied, if we're bothering you, get out. So I said, okay and just took off upstairs with my plate full of wings. They were too mad to say anything, and I enjoyed myself a nice plate of hot chicken wings 
while they stayed in the kitchen with salad only. I guess you could say OP took those wings and flew off with them. As a person that loves themselves some chicken wings, I would be enjoying that feast. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So of all these stories I've read today, which is your favorite and why? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't yet, if you could like and subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. Whatever you do, whether it's liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, all of it helps grow this channel and I appreciate the heck out of it. So until next time, I'll see you all tomorrow with some more stories.